It took so long, I was nearly crying. Equally intense and hilarious storylines proved to be real obstacles for the cast of Sex Education when filming the third season. It never goes in the direction I expect it to. One actor used specially curated playlists, while another got their pet dog a job on set. Whatever they did, it worked. However, filming didn't come without a struggle. Some scenes nearly didn't get filmed due to travel restrictions, and one actor regularly faced a four-hour commute to set. It's yeah. a bit weird. <laughs> Shuti Gatwa had a special trick up his sleeve that helped him get into character for the third season. A specially curated playlist. For every one of his scenes in the season, the actor chose a song to go with it and he would listen to it when filming. Not only that, but he chose an astrology sign as well. I'm in my head, Eric is a Leo, and so I read a little bit about Leo and I like apply it to his lines. The song he chose as a closer for the journey of Eric was Don't Judge Me by FKA Twigs. Pretty much the perfect song for such a fun and inspiring character. The clubbing scenes throughout the third season are some of the most memorable and exciting moments. The energy was definitely high on set and the performers were ready to hit their marks. But getting the enthusiasm and energy just right for the whole scene was tricky since only 10 seconds of filming actually had music playing. For filming purposes, the majority of the dancing was done in total silence. One of the best parts of the hit show is how much freedom the cast is given, so their improvisation skills can just add to the comedy. I've certainly never done a scene without improvisation. Director Ben Taylor was often feeding the cast little ideas with ways to boost the comedy in the script even more. Who's this? Hey, that's Steve. Oh, Amy the goat. This hilarious moment of Amy believing Maeve doesn't know who Steve is was brought up by Taylor right before, and with that idea in mind, Amy Lou Woods brought comedy gold. For Tanya Reynolds, filming Lily's storyline for season three hit pretty close to home and proved to be a struggle for the actress on set. I guess I've learned how different I am from her, but also the things that we have in common. She really related to how self-conscious Lily had become, which could be very overwhelming when it came to filming, leaving the actress unable to look her castmates in the eye without getting too overwhelmed at times. Not every scene gets a perfect take the first time around, but one scene in particular took a record amount of time to get just right. One very awkward and hilarious scene on the trip to the battlefields of France ended up taking a whole lot of takes to get footage that was usable because the whole cast corpsed throughout the takes, unable to control themselves. The team almost got into trouble as they needed to finish filming before dark and they nearly ran out of time. Luckily, they managed to hit their marks and successfully produce one of director Ben Taylor's favorite scenes. In season three of Sex Education, Asa Butterfield surprised us all with his new facial hair. Since there is a time jump between the second and third season, the actor had to be aged a little as Otis, but Butterfield didn't have to worry about growing the facial hair himself. He's very proud of his mustache. What we see on screen is a fake mustache, which the usually baby-faced Butterfield totally rocks. Although, he isn't the biggest fan, explaining he didn't think anyone could stand seeing it for too long. The dog who plays Ruby's pup in the show is actually Mimi Keen's in real life, and its name is Baby. Keen has three furry friends, all of whom accompany her to set, but Baby is the star of her family with her role in sex education. I've been working on that for three years now. The actress had been speaking with director Ben Taylor since the first season, explaining just how simple it would be since the dog was always on set anyway. While filming for the third season was meant to start in April 2020, the pandemic put a major delay on production. After five months of waiting, the team got back to it in September 2020, with loads of safety protocols in place to protect the actors and crew members. These varied from being tested three times a week, masks, sanitizer… The usual stuff. Aside from the extra time it took to make sure everything was done safely, the cast and crew didn't have a wildly different experience filming. If anything, there was just more excitement because they finally had the chance to be in a room together again. Considering the show's daring content and wild storylines, the vibes filming certain intense scenes could be kind of confusing, leaving everyone crying one minute and laughing the next. You know, there are some emotional bits. 
In a particularly emotional scene between the Untouchables that didn't end up making the final cut, Ruby's friends gather at her house to support her, and Mimi Keen was instructed to physically look like she was crying a bit harder. Her back was what the camera saw, so they wanted to make sure the moving moment was still clear. However, the actress went a bit too far and quite literally started jumping up and down wildly. Once the actress was shown how absurd it all looked, the whole crew had a solid laugh. Even after all that work, great moments still won't make the season. Asa Butterfield is just as sweet in real life as he is in sex education. Hello, 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 hi. While the team behind the show was used to spending loads of time together, that didn't stop Butterfield from showing his enthusiasm and love for the whole crew every single day. The actor would literally make sure to say hello and goodbye to each person individually. Part of the reason for this was because of just how grateful the actor was to get back to work on set again. A privilege he'd never take for granted again after being without it for so long. Mimi Keen has the company of her three dogs when she heads to set each day. And thank goodness, since it can be up to a whopping four hours to commute each way. While it might seem like a rough start and end to each day, it's actually one of the actress's favorite parts of doing the show. The drive could be just over a couple of hours, but Keen is a huge fan of the activity and doesn't tire of it at all. Most of the cast and crew take the train, but the Ruby actress uses the drive as an opportunity to explore and see all the wildlife along the way. Uh, at least I had the dogs, so I was lucky. The actors who play the Untouchables together absolutely adored their clothing in the series, and especially the way they all looked together. One day in particular saw the actors in an array of extremely bright clothing that they knew they had to capture the look of. Little moments like these behind the scenes are a testament to just how close the cast has become throughout the series. Between takes, they're often hanging out, goofing around, chilling in their trailers, or taking countless photos of the fur babies. George Robertson is talented, there's no doubt about it, but his drawing skills weren't quite up to par with his character Isaac's. The actor isn't responsible for the drawings, but since doing it for the show, Robertson began doing art more himself in his spare time to practice. He may not be great at it, but it's a special gift that he's gotten from playing the role of Isaac. Tanya Reynolds not only brought Lily to the screen, she also captured behind-the-scenes snaps on film. The actress was always capturing moments using a real film camera to share with many, many fans. It's just been a real privilege to be a part of it, to be a part of a team that is so strong. Yet another reason we love this cast and series. The storyline that saw Eric going to Nigeria for the family wedding was one of the most powerful in the whole season. However, there was a chance we were going to miss it all. With the travel restrictions, the team struggled to figure out how and where to shoot the scenes, but eventually they made TV magic happen and brought the empowering and celebratory scenes to life. The cast and crew of Sex Education never fails to impress. While there was a whole lot to overcome, be it intensely emotional scenes or COVID protocol restricting filming locations, the team still managed to nail it. Which scene do you think would have been most difficult to film?